see that building up there? That building is a zoo. Look at it. You think an animal should be kept here? To be honest, when I see that, I, I really feel that I can't be proud being a human being sometimes. Animals, 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 shocking, so many animals. It's very frustrating to see that it's continuing. My name is Edwin. Rescuing animals is my life. Every day is an adventure not knowing what kind of animal is going to need our help. These wild animals and the people helping them are my welcome. Edwin Wieck is in the Thai capital, Bangkok. He is preparing for an undercover operation to find illegal wildlife traders. Edwin is well known by conservationists and within the illegal wildlife trade, as he runs the largest wildlife rescue centre in Southeast Asia. Thailand's wildlife traders know Edwin means trouble for them. Before he begins, Edwin needs to do a bit of shopping. I have to buy a shirt because, you know, when I walk into that zoo or any other place, I need to be able to, to mingle in with the crowd, so I want to look like a tourist when I do that. Six pack coming soon might be appropriate and the right way to cover up my eyes. <laughs> same, same, but different. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I think nobody recognizes me this way, do they? What about this one? Yeah, this is my disguise for tomorrow. Maybe take another corner, maybe this is okay, I don't know. But, uh, you know, I think as an inspector of food, beverage and ice cream, I'll do fine. <laughs> After a quick change of clothes, Edwin is ready for action. You see that building up there? That building is a zoo on top of a shopping mall. On the 6th and 7th floor of the Pata Mall, there's a zoo for over 25 years now with chimpanzees, orangutans, monkeys, tigers, leopards, bears, and even one gorilla, the only gorilla in Thailand, that have been living there for over 25 years. And I think today my FBI, my food, beverage, and ice cream disguise will work. If not, we might get our ass kicked. Let's go. Tanya, one of Edwin's volunteers from the rescue center, is joining the undercover operation today. Fourth floor, women's clothes. Fifth floor, men's clothes. Sixth floor and seventh floor, gorilla, orangutan, tigers, leopards, monkeys, bears. Unbelievable. This zoo houses around 200 animals. The crew is soon asked to stop filming. Many of the species are threatened or even endangered, such as these orangutans. Some of the animals have been locked in these cages for almost three decades. Edwin and other animal welfare groups have made official complaints about this zoo in the past, but it still has a license to operate. The zoo has had a zoo license for 20 years and people have been trying to close it down, including our foundation. For the, for the last few years we've been campaigning to stop this place, but somehow it, it's impossible to get it done. But look at yourself, you know, look at it. Do you think an animal should be kept here?
Uanoi has been in this zoo since 1987. He is thought to be the only gorilla in Thailand. It's really unbelievable, isn't it? Look, look at these animals. 600 square meters, 500 square meters, I don't know. 200 monkeys, gorilla, chimpanzees, orangutans, tigers and bears, leopards. On the seventh floor of a shopping mall. It's just unbelievable. Edwin has filed yet another official complaint to the authorities. See, it's really depressing when you come down after this in the, you know, the top of the building and you get down here again and you see so many animals that need help. The only thing you want to do is help them all. Volunteer Tanya is upset by what she just witnessed. Animals look miserable. No sunlight, really hot in there. Uh, I can't believe anybody would keep animals like that, or anybody would even go and visit. Wildlife Rescue Center, the vets are examining baby turtles recovered from an illegal wildlife trader. Yeah, this is uh, just coming from like, Bangkok. Mm -hmm. But I know about the story. So, like we have in the market in Bangkok, I saw they sell a lot also. This turtle. This around one month now, so they can get bit like 50 kilo, maybe more, 60. It's quite big. <laughs> that thing's cute, you know? Just a tongue. Yeah, look like it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's a giant turtle. It's dangerous if you put your finger in the oh. mouth. <laughs> but it's not an endangered species. No. no. Mm. The illegal wildlife trade is big business. Conservation charities estimate its total value could be as much as 20 billion US dollars per year. It is the fourth largest illegal trade in the world, after drugs, human trafficking, and illegal arms dealing. Southeast Asia is a major center for the wildlife trade. I'm basically shocked to see a toucan for sale here at the market. The problem is in Thailand that um, some species of birds are not protected if they're foreign. So foreign species, such as the toucan we just saw from South America, it's protected under CITES, the International Trade and Endangered Species, but there's no local enforcement. So what you get is this grey market. It's not 100% clear to some people whether it's legal or not. Animals 
animals, animals, shocking. So many animals. And it feels so hot here. It must be almost 50 degrees here under that black stuff here. Look at that guy. We got mamas and monkeys over here, They're legally sold. Sunday. Basically, what we found is the same thing. We always see still a little protected, you know, birds like uh, owls and eagles and other exotic birds. It's very frustrating to see that it's continuing. King Cobra is coming. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's small. It's stingy. Yes. Do you still feel your arm? It's blue, you see? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I said so now! <laughs> oh my god! No, it's okay. No, it's okay. No, wait, 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 I can't. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. This one, uh, someone just finds. Around the center, near bar, at night time, they run to me. It's snake, snake. I think it's king cobra. But this is python. It's quite... That was really disappointing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. In Thailand, we have uh, three different species of python. This is the biggest um, species, although this one is still a young one. It's probably only about three or four years old. Uh, it will get to much, much bigger than this. We're gonna release the snake this evening. And it's a little bit colder because it's really warm now. So we're feeding him before, so he has some food to survive. Uh, not me. <laughs> this one we are sure uh, that it's from a, you know, from a green area, from a forested area. So we're gonna release him right there. This is not a city snake. I never understand why people speak English to Thai snakes. <laughs> oh, big belly. You see that? <laughs> have to keep go down. Down, down. Sometimes if you feel like stuck here, they can peel out again because they're stressed, you know? If there's so many woolly woman, that would be all like <laughs> It's another day in Bangkok for Edwin and Wildlife Centre volunteer Tanya. Today they are visiting at another zoo in the city, which features animal shows with endangered species. Okay, I'm gonna show you something now that you will not believe again. Another example of uh, wildlife exploitation in Bangkok. Orangutan boxing show. Let's see what you think of that. Why 
work with animals every day, you know their feelings, you know how to respect them somehow. This doesn't show any respect at all, nothing. No respect to animals. Yeah, you can see how low humans can get, in my opinion, is uh, in degenerating kind of uh, shows. Exploiting these animals to the maximum, I would say. To be honest, when I see that, I, I really feel that I can't be proud being a human being sometimes. It's just despicable. We found in the zoo uh, 10, 11 years ago, 115 baby orangutans on a raid that were smuggled into Thailand from the wild in Indonesia. And after a long period of, of fighting with the authorities and the zoo, we finally had 78 orangutans confiscated. Um, 30 of them died, or basically disappeared, is a better word. And only 58 out of those 78 were once uh, returned back to Indonesia after years of struggle. They stopped the orangutan boxing at that time, but it's back on again. And as you can see, they make a lot of money. There's over a thousand people sitting there watching that show, enjoying the show. You know, that makes you wonder. At the same time, thousands of people respond on social media whenever we post things about this, being upset, wanting to see change. And that's exactly the change that we want to see too. So we'll definitely keep on campaigning against shows like this. And more and more people are joining us. And that's a bit of a positive point of the view then. Edwin has heard rumors of an Asiatic black bear held in captivity somewhere in the city. Today, he is on the hunt for it. Local Thai people often give animals to temples. The monks take their Buddhist commitment to care for all life seriously, but they are ill-equipped to deal with them. Oh, that's dogs and cats and rabbits and stuff. My God, falling cages. <laughs> I, I don't have a problem with anyone. I'm just coming to see if the bear is happy or not, if it's really here. I'm sure they've got nothing to hide. And besides that, we're not here to make trouble. We just want to see if the bear is happy and if maybe we can help. Edwin soon finds what he's looking for. That's a very pink cage. It is obvious to Edwin that this homemade cage is not suitable for a bear of this size. All the poo and the food leftovers and the piss, it's all all over there to stay. You can't you can't clean it. Nobody can go in. She probably will attack it. And then the sign here is funny. It says, Hi, my name is Baloo. I'm a female black bear and I don't have a boyfriend yet. Kiss kiss. Love you. And this is the kind of thing we deal with quite often. Crazy places like this, a, a pink painted bear enclosure of about four by six meters in the middle of Bangkok for a sole, lonely Asiatic black bear. The temple monks also find rare or exotic animals can be a valuable source of income. Tourists and locals will make donations to see them. When I come to a temple, I come to somebody else's house, just walking into a temple, saying to a referred monk, uh, an abbot, like, hey, hello, I'm Edwin. I know everything about wildlife. You got a bear here, and it shouldn't be like that. Give me the bear. That, that's, you know, that's not gonna work. And, you know, this monk is very referred in Thailand. I would say one of the top 10 monks of the country. So he's not gonna be impressed with me unless I am humble, friendly, and full of good ideas. So I'm gonna try that today. Edwin offers his help, explaining to the abbot that he can move the bear back to facilities at the Wildlife Rescue Centre. The abbot invites Edwin to take a further look around his temple. There are many more animals here. We are going now to a, a condominium for dogs. So this temple does not only have a bear in a small enclosure, the abbot just told me he also gives refuge to over 700 dogs. And he says he doesn't know what to do with him because he's got so many. So I'm a little bit worried what we're going to see. No idea. 
Troubled or unwanted animals often end up at these temples. Sometimes they are offered as atonement for people's sins. Thailand is a Buddhist, Buddhist country, so in a Buddhist country, ending a life is not something easily done. It's just not done at all. It's just against the, the beliefs, against the culture. You can see here that the dog condo, the second floor. So dogs live upstairs and downstairs. You see? They never get out of this. They're rescued, put in the cages, and that's it. Edwin knows there's a lot of work to be done to improve animal welfare in the city. But he has also seen one positive change in recent years. So this is where we got Kan Kwei, our elephant, the male elephant at the center from. He was basically used as an exploitation tool, begging for money on the streets of Bangkok before we got him. This was a familiar sight a few years ago in Bangkok. Elephants roaming the streets with their mahouts, dodging cars and traffic in the busy urban jungle, begging for food and money for their owners. Now, we've campaigned for many years, with many organizations, many people, and since about three years now, the banging on the streets of Bangkok by elephants is against the law. It's gone. It was a big task to get the law passed within the city of Bangkok. We now still have to get it passed through the whole country. But it's not impossible, as we proved. I'm sure we're going to get it done. So every now and then, we do get a victory. Every now and then, we do get what we really want. So, you see, no more elephants around here. At the rescue centre, the staff are preparing for a python and a slow loris to be released back into the wild. They have received veterinary treatment and now healthy enough to take on the outside world. This is the ultimate goal whenever possible, and it's a happy moment for the staff and volunteers.